people, I just want to talk to you about how I'm thankful. And you should be thankful too that in the midst of this unprecedented time and this unprecedented year, I'm thankful. If he didn't do anything else for me, he's done more than enough. Now that's what I can say about myself, but can you say the same? Let's just see what the psalmist says. Psalms 100 verse 4 to 5, popular scripture being tossed around today, but I really want to go into get deeper into this. Psalms 100 4 through 5 says, Enter his gates with a song of thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy and loving kindness are everlasting, and his faithfulness endures to all generations. Now, here's the thing. Notice how he's saying, be thankful to him and bless and praise his name. The Lord is good. We might think we're good, but there's no good thing in us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. We give the praise unto him. It's his mercy and his loving kindness that's everlasting. Man, Man's mercy is very short. You cross man one good time, and, and, and that's it for you. But God, he's, he's patient. He, that's why we love, because he's, show, he's, he's shown us love first. That is what love and kindness he's drawn us. And it says, sing a song, enter his gates with the song of thanksgiving. Your life is the greatest song you can ever sing. That's what the word worship comes from. It's, it means to serve. It comes from the word of the trio. Serving. That's the greatest song you you could ever sing. But let me break down Psalms 100. He enters his gates with thanksgiving. His gates with a song of thanksgiving. Psalm 66:13 says, "I shall come into your house with burnt offerings. I shall pay you my vows." The Bible also says that we bring the sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice because your flesh doesn't want to do this. Your flesh doesn't want to give glory and honor to God. Actually, there's parts of your flesh that wants to agree with the enemy. That's why you have to have your mind transformed. That's why you can't be conformed to this world, but you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Psalms 116, verse 17 through 19 says, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Remember, saying thanks is a sacrifice for people because the, fle the flesh is prideful. It says that I will call on the name of the Lord. In this time, it's very easy to call on your bank account, your friend, you know, someone who has stature, status, but we are to call upon God. The, for Psalms 116, it goes on to say this, I will pay my vows to the Lord. Yes, in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, the temple. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank him and praise him wherever you go and whoever you're around. He's worthy of all the praise, whether you're in the church house, whether you're just going out and about. Give him the praise and the honor that he deserves. Now, contextually, this psalm is about a thanksgiving from the rescue from death, that we should have died in our sins, but God has had his hand upon us. Psalms also says, it says his mercy is everlasting. Psalms 136 verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His loving kindness, graciousness, mercy, and compassion endures forever. Now let me tell you something interesting. Psalm 136. The ancient rabbis said that the 26 verses of Psalm 136 correspond to the 26 generations of Adam to Moses. And they maintained that since these generations were not given the Torah, the law, they could not earn merit and were sustained only by God's loving kindness. And that is incredible. That they didn't have the Torah and the law, but God had sustained them. That's what faith is all about. And now on this day, I'm not going to be before you long. We have so much to be thankful for. God has kept us all during one of the most trying years in human history. A year that most of us that have never ever seen. Through all of the strong delusion, demonic attacks, end time persecution, we're still standing. And we will win. And we have to be thankful and give God all the glory that he deserves. That 2020, it won't finish you. I'm speaking prophetically. 2020, it won't finish you, but you will finish 2020. First Chronicles 16.8 says, Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. First Chronicles 16.9 says, Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all of his wondrous, wondrous works. Are you talking? Are you, are you giving glory to him? Or are you just being quiet? Are you just, are you just hiding? It's time to arise and shine, not run and hide. And even though this Thanksgiving might not be how we're used to seeing it because of this pandemic, 
we still have to be thankful. Even if you don't have that big smorgasbord and all your family's not around, you have limited people in your house, there is one thing you do have, and that is salvation. That his death and his resurrection is one of the most important things to be thankful for. It's because of his death that we can live and have an everlasting life. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart of the standard of teaching to which you were committed. That's Romans 6, 17. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory over this life through Jesus Christ. And this is why we are to be thankful. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 says, But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us into triumphal procession and through us spreads the fragrance of knowledge of him everywhere. I thank him for the sacrifice that he made for you and that he made for me on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. See, God has such a way with words, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a melodic, it's rhythmic. But here's the thing. This, this is only, salvation is only provided for those who believe that Jesus is Lord. That, not, that he's not just a historical figure, but that he truly was the Son of God. That he was the Word made flesh. That he is our perfect sacrifice. That he became the substitute for us. This is what salvation, the only way, the only way you can say Jesus is Lord is by the Holy Spirit. I want you to be clear that the, that the demons even believe. And they, and they tremble. But you can't just have this head knowledge. Christianity is no mental ascent. It's a life-changing walk. It's a life-changing experience in day by day. You, you, you develop, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing of progressive revelation that every day God shows you more of himself to you. But the thing is you have to be willing to have God show himself to you. Creation attests to all of it. Creation attests that there is a God. But you have to make the decision. Will you serve him? Will, will you put your faith in him, forsaking all I trust him? Will you put your faith in Christ and Christ alone? It's a, the redemption has already been paid for. The price has already been paid. You just have to accept it. And if you have not accepted this gift, this free gift, this invitation that you can't work for, it's given to you freely, this invitation to spend eternity with him, you can. I invite you now. It's so simple. If you don't know where to start, you just come before him humbly and say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you now, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. God, I'm a wretch undone. I can do nothing without you. God, I repent of my sins. Anything that I've done displeasing in your sight, anything I don't know I've done, anything that I put before you, I lay it at your feet. I thank you that in Christ I'm a new creation, that the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I thank you that I'm a new creation in Christ, that though I was red as scarlet, I'm made white as snow. That whoever's in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. And Lord, I thank you. I confess my mouth and believe my heart that you died over 2,000 years ago on Calvary. And you rose again. And I thank you that I'm born again. I thank you I'm the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. I thank you that I'm made new the old way. Doing things I don't do anymore. I put to death my old way of thinking and I, my old way of doing things. And I seek you. I seek your will and your purpose for my life. And I thank you. I thank you that I'm born again. I thank you I'm a Christian and I renounce you right now, Satan. I do not serve you anymore, but I serve God. And for God, I live and for God, I die. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. I encourage you, if you said that prayer and you meant it, congratulations, you're part of the, of the, the, the citizenship of heaven. But that's not where it ends. That's just the beginning. I encourage you, get into a Bible-believing church. Open your word. If you don't know where to start, start with the book of John. Be around people who push you to the next level. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Find accountability people and know that you're never alone. Even if you're alone on this holiday, God is with you. That, that if your mother and your father forsake you, the Lord will take you up. That he will not leave you nor forsake you. That he's a present help in the time of trouble. Be encouraged. He's, know that the Bible says he goes before you and breaks the bars of brass and the gates of iron. Be encouraged. God bless.